In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to learn about the Wiggly Selector. It's a totally different way of animating text using the standard text animation tools, and it's pretty awesome. And I'm pretty awesome. So let's learn. All right, everybody. So we get into After Effects, and I've already created a comp. You create one, too. That'll be super good. And let's make some text. So new text. And that text could say something like text, animation, animaton, animate, whatever. Doesn't matter what your text says, doesn't matter what your frame size is, all of this stuff is not important. What is important though is that we want to make the text 3D and note that I'm using ray traced 3D. If you are not using ray traced 3D, yours will look different than mine. You don't have to have this ability. In fact, I could start doing this entirely in classic 3D with no extrusions or anything, won't make any difference. So if mine doesn't look like yours, then don't get too bent out of shape. We're here to talk about the wiggle selector of text animation. Now, if you're familiar with basic text animators, uh, maybe you've seen my earlier tutorial. If not, go watch it now and then come back and do this. By default, you'll find that when you go animate and then animate something like rotation, the default range selector is a range selector. So that's super good, but the type of motion that we want to cause is instead a selector wiggly expression. So the wiggly selector is quite a bit different. Um, the range selector basically picks a range of your text, so between this point and this point, and then applies whatever the thing is. So let's say our rotation here is like uh, 90 degrees, right? Let's take the wiggly selector off. Then in between, on a range selector, between that range, things are going to be turned 90 degrees. That's super wonderful. If we use instead the wiggly selector, it's going to apply to pretty much everything, right? And what it's going to do is that it's going to go from max 100% to min negative 100% of 90 degrees and it'll wiggle it two times a second. It's doing exactly what the wiggle expression does. It creates a random value and then oscillates, you know, from the baseline, 100% one way, 100% the other way, the value we're stipulating. So think of it like we're saying wiggle two comma 90 degrees to all of this stuff and then we can do so much more with it. We will eventually be creating something exactly like the intro that I showed you, but for now, uh, let's uh, enjoy what we're looking at here. Another thing you should be aware of is that you can combine range selectors. What does that mean? Well, right now we've got both of them activated, meaning for this range, do this to them. If I start pinching that range off, it starts straightening things out. So if we animate this, from one side to the other, like we animate, uh, do, 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 start here, move ahead a whole bunch of frames, and here, what it's doing is it's animating, straightening things out one at a time, bring them back to baseline. I'm going to keep saying that word baseline, meaning an unaffected text where nothing weird is happening to it. At this point, everything weird is happening to it. At this point, nothing weird is happening to it. Okay, let's get on to doing that specific look that you saw in the intro. We're going to add property per character 3D. That means that each of these characters is now going to behave in three dimensions independent of each other. Now, that also means that we're talking X, Y, and Z rotations. And what I'd like to do is say 180 for each of those. So they are really moving around. Some other things that I want to edit about these are within some more options about all this stuff. We have an anchor point grouping, meaning the anchor point of each of these that they're currently wiggling and moving around is all based on the anchor point of that letter. I want to change that. I want it to be only for all, so that they are all rotating around the same centralized anchor point, which uh, kind of looks a little bit weirder. So that's, that's fine by me. Wicked. It's just a different way of having the look go. The more options is not something, you know, unique to the wiggly selector. That can be pretty much anything. So you can call it the wiggly selector, the wiggle selector. It, it doesn't really matter. The point is that it's doing the wiggle operation to things. If you understand the wiggle, you're going to understand this. 
Now, moving right along, now I'm going to add another property, and that property is going to be position. I want these things to not only be rotating like crazy, but I want them to have uh, a really big variance in their position. So everything is all over the place, great, and then it snaps itself into alignment. Cool. Now, one thing I don't like is that every, you know, two times a second, there's like a bounce, you know? You can see it more, more. And that's because every two times a second, it's wiggling. If I set this to zero, all that's doing is gonna position everything randomly out in space, and then as we animate our selector through, it's going to snap them into alignment. So what I wanna do is I still wanna have them buzzing around like bees, uh, bees that I'm allergic to, and that if they sting me, I die. Um, I'm just joking, I'm not allergic to bees. I'm actually not allergic to anything, except for lactose. Um, but, you know, these don't buzz around like lactose, unless I drink it, and then it, it buzzes around in my stomach. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set wiggles a second to zero, and then I'm going to mess with the temporal phase, okay, and I'm gonna type in time times a thousand, all right? Now the temporal phase is basically moving this wiggle's randomness through all of the time indexes that it would have gone through. Um, it's a weird thing to think of, but imagine that this random thing is just running through an operation. Each frame is another part of that operation, and we're basically just pressing play and going through them. Um, if it was just time without the times a thousand in there, you can see what that looks like. Very slow is what that looks like. So times a thousand is what I want there. Now I would like to also induce some more randomness in here. I'm gonna copy this, go to the spatial phase, paste it there, and uh, have things going quite a bit more randomly. Okay, that's feeling nice and random. So we've got these things, they're buzzing around, they're coming together one thing at a time. That is pretty good. Another thing that I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to keyframe all of these, uh, set them back at the beginning here, so it's really crazy at the beginning, and then at the end, it calms down. So while all of this is happening, all of the letters are also calming down to become more in line. So everything starts off crazy town, and then it gradually starts to calm itself. So that's one way of doing that, is by keyframing all of these. If you don't want to keyframe those, though, I would recommend instead you keyframe these. So the min-max values are saying how far away from baseline, you know, max 100%, which is 100% of this. Instead, we have those keyframe down to be like this. So that has the exact same effect without harming these values. These stay constant, and we use these things to do stuff, all right? So you see how that's working? Everything's flying around like angry bees, and it's coming in to settle. Good stuff. Now, it's also settling one thing at a time. So later on in the intro, ba -ba 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 -ba, however far ahead we went, I just set some keyframes here, move ahead, amp this up to 100, and then negative 100 like this, so it all flies apart, but it's not going to do anything unless this range selector is getting off its case. So we go like this, set a couple of keyframes there so it sort of breaks itself apart, and now it is free to fly around as much as it would like. Let's do this, let's do, takes two to reach maximum flying apart, and then takes two to tango, I mean, come back together, okay? So it's gonna fly apart and then reform itself. Now, I don't want it to reform the word text animation. I want it to reform a new word. So I'm gonna change the source text up here, all right? Move ahead one, and now double click on a layer and type in uh, something new, all right? Now you might think, that's pretty jarring. Why don't people just notice, you know, what's going on? Well. The truth of the matter is, there is a lot of motion going on. So maybe you won't notice, maybe other people won't notice that the letters are changing uh, as it happens. But uh, what I would recommend, so that people don't notice, is to just put on motion blur. See what I did there? You know, it's all motiony and blurry. Who can keep track of what's happening? You know, it's just crazy. It's crazy. So 
This is one way to make use of the wiggly wiggling wiggle wiggle selector. It's different than the range selector in many of the ways that I've just mentioned. Uh, most notably, it is that instead of operating on a range, you are operating on wiggling. You can still put your range selector in. Remember, the range selector is applying to everything below it. So if this is below this, we're all good. Now, what else can we say about this thing? We've talked about the phase. Um, there's lock dimensions that can be fun sometimes, you know, that creates a different type of look, kind of different, but that's just locking the dimensions together. Certain properties get stuck together. Um, the correlation is something that I typically like to put down to zero. Um, when I say correlation, that means how similar is each element to each other. So this is 0%, and this is 100%. Notice that they're all kind of coalesced, as in they're all doing exactly the same thing. So put that to zero. So that everything is unique and separate, and a unique and beautiful snowflake. All right, so that is that. Okay, now that's using the wiggly selector. What else did we do in this intro? Well. I used Ray Trace 3D, and I don't know why I say it in an apologetic tone, but maybe because I know my computer is a lot more powerful than yours. I mean, it might not be, maybe you have a ball on computer, but mine is awesome and leverages CUDA technology, and um, that's just great. So, with Ray Trace 3D on, I'm able to set an extrusion depth for these, um, which is great because now they're all like extruded everywhere. Um, let's take motion blur off so you can kind of see what's going on. But now you can see they're all extruded shapes. Now, if you have extruded shapes, you need to have some lights, obviously. Let's put in an ambient light. Let's put in a new light. Let's put in a point light. Cool. Let's put it up over here. Let's duplicate it and put one down here here. Okay, neat. Now we have some light in this scene. I'm feeling positive about the lights I've got. Uh, let's create a new solid to serve as our background. Maybe like a pink background. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. Uh, so pink background. Uh, I would like a, a vignette, which I put on a lot of things. This is just a circle generator. If you want to learn about vignettes, see the tutorial about vignettes. This is not about that. Um, create a new adjustment layer. That adjustment layer is going to use HLS, noise HLS. Some squared 2% uh, noise. Good. Uh, I use this noise just to kind of break things up a little bit. I go on here, I'm going to uh, just fast blur this, just kind of smooth it. It's just stylistically what I prefer to do. So just give it a little one. One on that, and maybe even more, we'll give two, boom, some of that. Okay, so we've got this, we've got that, we've got lights, camera, action, um, perhaps a new solid, da, 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 da. make it white. I put uh, weird hash marks in the back. I do that by making uh, Venetian blinds on things. Uh, da, da, da. Put this at 200, 75 completion. Duplicate that, put it at 160, creates weird little diamonds, and put this under this, make it 25%, uh, like so, and we'll do a little bit of this, a little, little mask feather on this thing, like this, okay, cool, cool. Okay, there we go, and I think we are pretty much wrapped up on this particular piece of junk. Okay, so now what's left to do, put on the motion blurs, and render it. So, like I was saying, um, the wiggly selector is meant to imbue random motion into things. And as you can see, we've managed to make things crazy random and then get them under control. So, that's what you want to do. You want to have randomness, but you want to control it. So remember, that range, min max amount, is how far away from baseline are we going, wiggles per second, how often is it wiggling? And if you don't like that undulation, which is a sine wave, just so you know, um, then you can just use the temporal and spatial phase. Um, do not use the um, random seed for this. That's not the correct motion. That's not the correct thing to do. You want to mess with the phase. If you start messing with the random seed, 
what happens is, let's say we just go from one to two to three to four to five. It kind of mimics it, but can create erroneous results. Uh, essentially, random seed is rolling the dice new every time. You would rather have it phase, which is a gradual change, than a whole new random set of things. Another thing to say about random seed is we're supposed to be using this to be like, well, I don't like that, show me a new one. I don't like that, show me a new one. So that can be used just to reset. If you're like, ah, this motion isn't really doing it for me, maybe like this, maybe like that, maybe like that kind of thing. So that is the Wiggly Selector in a nutshell. This has been Evan Abrams teaching you fun things in After Effects or rudimentary things in After Effects. I don't know what you already know. Hopefully this is a fun way for you to get some text out there. Uh, it's a cheap way to make text move and groove and do it. And this is kind of like intermediate text animator stuff. We haven't really gotten deep into you know, any of the advanced properties of these things, but we're getting there closely. So if you saw my first text animator about the range selector, check that tutorial out and it'll teach you more about the range selector. Um, and hopefully this answers people's questions about what else can I do with this thing? And uh, yeah, if you want to see more of my stuff, head over to evanabrams.com. There's some cool things to download. You can download this very project file. Check me out on Twitter at EC Abrams. Uh, tweet at me if you have questions, comments about After Effects in general. If you have questions about this tutorial, leave those questions in the comments of this tutorial so that I can answer them and it all makes sense about this. It's very specific. That's my request from me to you. And if you have requests from you to me, I'd say leave them on the Google Plus page or on the Facebook page. Links to all this are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, if this is the kind of thing you're into, definitely subscribe to the channel. There's new stuff here every week, and I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again, and have a nice day.